Hey guys, what's up? It's 412 Sports Cards here today, back with another video, and today I'm going to be talking to you about what you should be doing if you haven't already gotten into the Legends card market. So, we've seen the rise of Legends recently. It's something I've talked about a lot um, on this channel, but some of the hysteria is even beginning to cool. The prices are still really high now that that massive spike has happened. And today, I want to provide you with some insights on what to do if you may have missed the boat on Legends or are looking to get invested even more into Legend cards. So I'll try to keep it brief um, since I will be talking on this in a interview to come up soon on this channel. Stay tuned for that. It should be really good. I'll touch on this and a lot more in that interview. But without further ado, let's get into it. Point number one, you got to be wary of buying at the peaks. We've seen it time and time again. When cards run, they run super fast. And while it can be a sign that maybe you want to get in before the market runs even higher, I'd be very cautious, even in a Legends market, just because there can be so much manipulation. Take, for example, this Mike Trout. PSA 10 of this card was going for about $3,000 a little bit ago, and then like a week later, there were two comps up at $10,000 after sitting about $3,000 only a week prior. That's an absurd, absurd jump, even by today's card standards. That's absurd. Now, turns out those comps were fake. So anyone who bought even close to that to those comps just got screwed since they're down to around $6,000 in a PSA 10 right now. A massive increase from the 3,000, but not when you consider if you bought up at that $10,000. It shows you how dangerous and how quickly you can lose if you buy at peaks. In these periods of volatility, which I would call the legends market right now, even though a lot of it's going up, it is a period of volatility you got to be careful of the price you're getting in at. And yes, I know it's hard to know if a jump to 10K is manipulation or if it's the beginning of an even higher run. Um, I always say err on the side of caution. So here's what I'd be on the lookout for. Here's what I'd be on the lookout for to know that it's a, a sa relatively safe time to enter. should be on the lookout for one, many comps in the price range. If we got comps in that $10,000 range over five days, two a day for five days, like 10 comps there, I would I would feel confident that that's around what the card's trading for. You know, you look at the bidder history and stuff like that. I, I would have faith that that might be a legitimate price. And two would be steady price growth. A steady climb up to $10,000 for the trout would have been much more reason for me to say, okay, there's, there's steady demand. There's been demand at all these levels below it. So if if the demand starts to taper out at some point, there, there was demand at 7, there was demand at 8, there was demand at 9. That's really, I have a lot of strong confidence to buy just because you know there was demand at all these levels, not just at this $10,000 level all of a sudden. But that's what I have to say just about being afraid of, of the peaks. And next I'll deal with some more of the subjects of how to get invested on a budget into Legends because obviously not everyone has the cash to splash out like that. If you're still watching, drop a like, drop a sub. I'd really appreciate it. Um, do my best to keep the content coming. And you guys who comment on these videos, you guys who like these videos, really keeps me going. So thank you. Um, point number two, and I'll begin this by saying that I never thought that I would be giving a talk about fractional ownership on this channel. But here I am. I'm going to say it. I'm going to give the case for fractional ownership. And I dislike the idea a lot because I liked having cards like this in my hands, right? I love I love cards. I love having them in hand, tangible cards that I can enjoy. But the fact and I didn't like the fact that those holding com that the companies who you buy the fractional from, they decide when you sell out, right? So you can't necessarily sell the asset at the exact point you want to. So you don't have a ton of control over the selling price, but I just I just think that it's a prudent strategy financially right now and I'll get into it. So, we all know Wall Street money has come to the hobby, right? And it's chasing the PSA 10 of key cards. PSA 10 Nike, uh, PSA 10 Jordans. Um, uh, probably aren't making it down this far, but like this PSA 10 Jordan promo is a $35,000 card. And the, the money is chasing those big cards, those Jordan PSA 10s, six dollars $700,000 for those. And the demand, is, the demand at that high end is not just high, but I think it's going to continue to get higher. That's where there's a ton of money coming in. Wall Street firms have got deep pockets. And with the returns in cards, I would not be surprised if more funds come in 
and buy up these um, and buy up some of these high end cards they can lock away for a while. They're not going to dabble in riskier guys. They're just going to buy their Jordans, buy their Bronze, sit them in the in a safe, let their investors get into that fund and hold them for a while. And if you believe Gary V's theory that athletes might come in and buy big sports cards, they too are going to be chasing those PSA 10 Jordans, those um, I don't know LeBron tops Chrome refractors and big cards like that because they want to flex them, right? And they want to own the best of the best, and they got the money to own the best of the best. You're not going to see them dabbling in the likes of a of a Bowman Chrome PSA nine, and that kind of differs, right? Like that. I mean, that's definitely what we hear a lot. We hear about all this money coming in, how it's going to boost the hobby, and this is the big kicker. This is what you hear: the rising tide lifts all ships. Well, so far it's been true, but and and you know you, the Nike Jordan promo is up at like thirty five thousand, and it's done wonders for my PSA eight which has a much higher pop, pop of like a 1,000, despite the pop of 150 at the PSA 10, um, that, which kind of explains why I like fractional, right? I would rather be invested in that PSA 10 that costs seven times more and has a pop of 150 instead of 1,000. But anyways, in like this Bowman Chrome in a 10, is up to 20,000. It's done wonders for my PSA 9. The rising tide has lifted all ships. But the rising tide idea doesn't make a whole lot of it's, well, okay, it makes sense, but it's 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 not as easy to understand as people think because the t- the rising tide on 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 those big cards is Wall Street money. It's money of millionaire athletes. That's the money that's raising the demand at the top end of the market. That's where I think I I do think that's pretty steady too. Those people are going to lock those cards up. They'll exit the market, and with the supply so fixed for with these Jordans, there are only being three hundred of them. It, it really, I think, should keep the prices high. But for prices on the Jordan 1986 Fleer PSA 9s, and PS, or PSA 8s maybe, PSA 8s and below maybe we'll talk about, that's retail investor money. For the, for the tide to lift those, the retail investor needs to have confidence. The retail investor, you and me, and me it, we need to have confidence in those cards, and we need to be willing to spend more than we were before. That's what's going to lift those cards. Wall Street and big athletes aren't going to dabble that far down the food chain. That is the retail investor moving the market down there. The retail investor is moving this PSA 9 LeBron Bowman Chrome I have. It's not Wall Street moving these. It's you and me buying and selling these. And because of that, you and I are a little bit more willing to sell, right? We, we flip. We, we take our profit. We get scared when we have too much money in cards and we sell off. We don't have the deep pockets like these people buying these top end cards do. And that there's a lot more selling pressure because of that. People are, are when they get scared, they'll put them on the market, drive prices down. And because of that, I don't think these cards have the price stability that those top end cards do. And that's where the fractional ownership comes in. Gives you access to those top cards with the lowest pops, with the greatest demand, and what I would say is a lower selling pressure too. I don't think you'll see sell-offs. And the Wall Street firms, they're not idiots. They're not going to create a mass sell-off. They know that they can only let these trickle out. And especially if more and more of them get in, I think that market just will be have such little selling pressure and such high demand that it will outperform. That's where fractional comes in. It lets us get access to those top quality investment vehicles, which I would say are better investment vehicles than my LeBron Bowman Chrome PSA 9 especially in the longer run, which I like to think about. I like to try to have a longer run mindset. Um, try to wrap it up. We'll get this in under 10 minutes. Um, but the point three, which kind of ties off of that, is I don't feel priced out and run to modern. You should try to investigate fractional. Modern, yes, you can flip it. Yes, you can sell it when you wanted to. But it's a much more speculative investment. I think that the risk return, even with the high possibility, the high possible returns, I think the risk is so much greater. I think the risk adjusted return is just so much better in these legends. And that's why you should really give fractional a shot. Um, I can't believe I'd make a video talking this much about fractional, talking about how great it is for the market and great it is for you to use as an investment vehicle. But here we are. I haven't dabbled myself. I probably will be soon. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. And If you liked it, drop a like, drop a sub, and I'll catch you next time.